I mean, it's really amazing being here on the 10th AWE. I mean, for me, it's already the seventh time being here, so it's really great to see how things are changing and evolving. And for me, it's also amazing uh, now where we are here at the 10th AWE that even we have partners here using our platform from four different continents. And I'm very happy that two of them, Neil from the Netherlands and, uh, sorry, Neil. <laughs> You see Neil from the Netherlands and uh, Eric from the Netherlands and Neil from the US is joining us and showing two use cases using our technology. So you see, it's already a little bit too early for me. I guess <laughs> you're doing a quick intro uh, by yourself from your side. Very short about uh, us and uh, where we are coming from. So the first time when we attended here, I attended for my former um, AR company, a system integrator company, and we already started research in uh, different areas like computer deep learning, um, object tracking, and also this project here, AR positioning and AR indoor navigation was one of the parts. So long before AR Core and AR Kit started, it wasn't that bad as you can see the pictures here, but I'm very happy that Ori at the intro already gave a little bit of history from AR, but to be fair, being here the seventh time, it's for me a little bit like history when we started seeing how everything changed here. Um, nevertheless, uh, we managed that uh, after three years of development, we finally had a ready product, and since 2017, we have an up and running system. What happened uh, in the gap between 2015 and 2017? Um, we had a ready product, we went to big corporates like automotive clients, we were standing here last year on stage, for instance, uh, and they said, that's a really nice product, let's make a, a, a POC, and then let's go online. And then afterwards when we said, okay, let's go online, we got the requirements, and this was then me and my CTO after we've seen the requirements from our clients. So having a ready technology and oops, there's a little bit more. How do you work uh, on the cloud? Which cloud are you using? And when you are running in the cloud, then we have to put everything one security level up. Can you run on-premise? Uh, you only support MySQLite, but we need to use Oracle database and stuff like this. Is everything encrypted or not? So you see, uh, after we finalized the technology, we've just seen, okay, it takes us around 18 months more to finally have something which is not only ready, but also industry proven. This was quite a big part that we had to fulfill. But uh, nevertheless, in 2017, all of that worked out and we not only had a ready product, but also a platform that you actually can implement in any kind of venue. This is why I'm so happy that we got quite a diverse use cases here, showing something on an airport and showing something on a vessel later on. Uh, and also that the use case itself changed. So starting with the focus of navigation and then seeing that navigation now is only around 10%, but it's really about more showing the right data on the right spot and optimizing processes. And this is why I'm very happy now to hand over to Eric and showing us what they have done at Schiphol Airport. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for reaching out to us this morning. Uh, my name is Eric, and um, uh, I'd like to talk you through one of the projects we did with the Insider Navigation platform. Let's, let's introduce me first. I'm working at an IT company in the Netherlands called Centric. We are quite a large IT company over there, and we're focusing on business and IT outsourcing, and we are building a lot of software for specific branches. Um, together with one of our sister organizations, Antia, the next slide should arrive. But hmm. Yeah, there, there, there it is. Um, together with uh, one of our sister organizations, Antia, we are uh, working on quite a, a compelling project. Antia is an engineering company based in the Netherlands also that is doing a lot of work in other countries as well, like the United States. Uh, they have uh, six lines of business, and within these lines of business, they have a goal to be the most innovative engineering company in the ne Netherlands. So this is why all the uh, stuff they are doing have to have uh, digital transformations somehow. And we, as Centric, are their IT partner to fulfill this. So we are doing quite a lot of projects with them, and um, two of them in the AR, VR space, and those are about to run in real, real time. No. One of the projects we are doing is uh, the Schiphol project. Uh, Schiphol is the main airport of the Net Netherlands. 
It's quite a large airport. It's about uh, the largest airport of Western U Europe. And uh, Antea is responsible for the asset management of the toilet groups within um, the air airport. The airport has um, about 5,000 assets to be managed. And each asset has to be reached at least one time per year. And after inspecting it, it has to be repaired. There's a repair plan being made. And based on the repairs, there is a second inspection to, to see if the repairs were good. Um, Schiphol Airport is quite large. So the, all of the toilet groups are scattered all over the place. So it's, uh, it would be nice to have a nice navigation tool to reach each toilet group in time. The current system they're using to manage those assets is what I call the ultimate flatware, Excel. Mm -hmm. Th they, they started with Excel years ago and they're still running on Excel. They improved on it, but well. So we thought, how can we adding more stuff. It, it it's, should be quite easy. You can build an app, you can have a cloud da database, but then you're building more like the same. It's not innovative enough. So we thought we want to make a giant leap. So we think we thought, how can we use augmented reality technology within this space? So that's why we started thinking about augmented assisted asset management. And it uh, comprises of three aspects. That's what we think of now. Um, the first one is augmented navigation. Again, uh, Schiphol Airport is a large airport, so it is very efficient when you know you're, you're away, especially when you're new to, to the job. And also, uh, because of the 5,000 assets, we would like that we are sure we are at the right asset. So with uh, electronic navigation, augmented navigation, we're sure we're reaching at the right asset. The second thing, oh, the second uh, thing is that we um, want to view augmented data on the asset while we're there. Not only view augmented data, but also alter augmented data. So we get real-time inspection data of the previous inspections uh, on the repairs. We can see um, how many times the asset is used if, if this, that information is available. Um, but also within other asset management projects uh, Antia does, we have to have an interaction with, for example, SCADA systems or IoT systems. Uh, last but not least, when you're not able to do the inspection or the maintenance your, yourself, then we should have some augmented support over there. So these three items we call augmented assisted asset management, triple AM for a short word. And we managed to do a lot of these issues with the Insider Navigation platform. Um, so the Insider Navigation platform is actually a, you can have it as a SaaS platform, but it interacts with your smartphone or tab tablet. <coughs> and within the venue, you place markers, so your iPad or iPhone is always, always knows where it is. And then, of course, you can navigate to the specific asset where you want to, to go, go to. Um, again, when you're at the asset, you need real-time information on the asset itself. So you have to connect to some database, to some IoT stuff, to web data if available. And all these can be managed with the Insider Navigation platform by plugins. Uh, the most important part, however, is that we have to have all the assets within the system itself. So we need to have an integration with the design and uh, ge geographical systems where all the assets are drawn. So we have to have a API where we can extract all the data from the electronic drawings and automatically put all the assets in the inside the navigation platform. Otherwise, you have to manually enter all 5,000 assets on the right place, on the right spot. Um, so the insider navigation platform also gives us lots of APIs to integrate with these systems and to integrate, to uh, automate the routes, to automate the plug pl plugins on the assets. Um, again, it is a secure pl platform. Uh, Claim has always told, told you that, and you can run it on-premise if you want 
one high level higher up in security. So in the next uh, movie, you can see the results uh, of what we did. Thank you very much, Eric. Um, and if you want to see the movies afterwards, they're all also on our uh, YouTube channel because I've seen somebody filming, then you got already everything there. <coughs> and <coughs> uh, handing now over to Neil uh, as our partner in DC and um, very already much looking forward to this use case because it put our technology on a totally different venue, which you won't believe, but we haven't thought about when we started an indoor navigation <laughs> project. <laughs> Thank you, Clemens, and good morning to everybody. Uh, we're going to go, I guess, from the air to the sea at this point. <laughs> uh, this pilot project with the U.S. Navy uh, was built to demonstrate how we can provide wayfinding and situational awareness in, uh, for in-service engineers who maintain the nation's fleet. Uh, as you can see, it's a rather complex and challenging environment. <clears throat> uh, you have engineers who might be entering this ship for the first time who are unfamiliar with it and need to find a specific piece of equipment and have situational awareness to be able to resolve any issue or provide maintenance for it. The solution. So remember, in this ship, there's no cell, there's no GPS, there's no Wi-Fi, there's no beacons. It's a big hunk of metal and a lot of it's underwater. Last Tuesday, we started our work to implement our solution. And by Thursday, we had the, mapped out all of our pathways, all of our content, all of our warnings, and we're able to begin the filming and the photography for this particular event and for the Navy. I think I hit my head on that one. That's why we put the sign. <laughs> That's why we put the sign in <laughs> after I hit my head. Thank you. In addition, we also laid out a uh, preventive maintenance path for the in-service engineers to check on the readiness of some fire extinguishers. Uh, the work has to be done, the evaluation has to be done on site at the fire extinguisher, and then after you've completed the effort, a uh, summary report is sent over to system maintenance. If one of these fire extinguishers had failed, a work order would have been created immediately for it. And in addition to providing, of course, the pathways down to the engine room, uh, we provide the information when you get there. So here we've got an overlay of the system data that can help the uh, in-service engineers evaluate the situation and uh, provide them additional data. The data could have been provided real time or it could be cached uh, depending upon the data connection. And here's a great example on the lower left of one of the pathways along Broadway, which is one of the longest passageways on the ship. Uh, also in another uh, bulkhead you gotta get over, there's a caution sign there. And the lower right's an example of some Additional information, it might have been a uh, history, historical information about this particular piece of equipment, 
or it could be a repair card to tell you how to fix this particular piece of equipment. And here's the video from what we did last week. And what I like very much here is that, as you have seen at the end, um, supported by Visionary 777, is that um, based on, as Eric already said, um, on our system, we have a plugin system where you can define the UX UI, how to fetch data, how to set up processes. And we, for instance, work together with a partner in Hong Kong on a maintenance system for a facility management company. In general, it's always the same process. You've got different items. You want to ensure that people only can uh, open up the menu for maintenance when they are actually there because very often they have a lack of proof that the people are really there. Sometimes they just fill it out on paper, say they've made a maintenance routine, but they've never been there. With our system, we can ensure that people are actually there and only when you are close to it, within a few feet, maintenance routine open up, you can give your input and then it will be synchronized back. The nice thing is that we already got in that plugin uh, all that procedure so that Neil as our partner in the US could take it over. So what we are now also trying to build on top is something like an app store based on these plugins, having different kind of procedures, procedures where you, as we have seen, quickly can set it up for even a large venue, take plugins from others and set this up, connect it to the right system, and you, within a few days, have an up and running system for quite complex routines. And if you want to try it live, get an SDK, have your own try, just visit us, we're just one of the first pools on the left-hand side. Thank you very much. <laughs>